Hey guys, what's going on? You're watching T-Bone Tech. The Panasonic GH5 is capable of taking absolutely stunning video. So today we are talking about using the Panasonic GH5 for professional video production. In this video, we are going to be giving you everything you need to know about shooting video with this camera, and we are also going to show you some gear that's going to help take your video to the next level. So first off, let's talk about gear. The lens that I usually film on is the Sigma 18 235mm f1.8 lens. And because this lens is designed for cameras with APS-C size sensors, we're going to have to have an adapter. And this adapter is actually a speed booster. And what the speed booster is going to do is it's going to turn our Sigma 18 235mm f1.8 constant aperture lens to the equivalent of an 18 235mm f1.1 lens. If you are interested in current pricing availability on this lens or this speed booster, or anything I talk about in this video, there's going to be links as always in the description down below. Now the price is indeed very steep and you can pick up lots of other really great micro four thirds lenses that are going to work perfectly fine with the Panasonic GH5. This is just the best lens combination that I found. Now the price for this scared you, don't worry, everything gets much cheaper from here. Next we are going to be talking about keeping your video camera stabilized. And what I find best for keeping my Panasonic GH5 stabilized is going to be a monopod. Tripods are also extremely good and that is what I'm filming on right and now and as you guys can see of course the video is extremely stable. However if you're running and gunning and trying to get a whole bunch of different dynamic shots a monopod is definitely the way to go. So as you can see right now, this is an extremely stable monopod, and I'm actually not even touching it right now, and it's just standing up on its own right. It's going to have a cool three-leg design, which is going to help it be really stable, and it also does have a fluid tilt system. Image stabilization like this, paired with the five axis built-in image stabilizer in the GH5 is going to be an absolutely killer combination. This monopod is made by a company called Manfrotto and it's going to run you $250, but I can guarantee you it's worth every single penny. The GH5 has surprisingly very good built-in dual microphones and they're going to be great if you are filming indoors and they're definitely going to get the job done. They're just not going to be excellent, but if you take these outdoors and you're filming out on the street with your subject talking in front of the camera, you're going to pick up tons and tons of background noise and the audio is most likely going to be unusable. So what I recommend, and I recommend this on almost any video camera, is picking up a Rode Video Mic Pro or any type of shotgun microphone. You're just going to be able to plug it right into your microphone in jack on this Panasonic GH5 and it's going to take your audio to the next level. This is going to cost you about $220. Audio is actually one of the most important elements in your video, especially if you're trying to hold on to audience retention. Now, of course, if you aren't filming subjects or if you're going to do a voiceover later, you're definitely probably not going to want to pick up a shotgun microphone for your camera but if you plan on using the audio recorded in body, I definitely recommend picking up one. That's all the gear we are going to be talking about in today's video. Now we're going to jump over to the actual body of the GH5 and we're going to be talking about all these settings that you're going to want to use to shoot professional video with it. First, let's start off with focus. Unfortunately, the GH5 does not have a very good autofocusing system when filming video. And that means we want to film in manual focus mode almost all the time. So we're going to simply put our camera in MF mode here on the side of the lens. Going back to our camera here, we're just going to adjust the focus on our lens and that's going to automatically pop up this six times window here in the middle of the screen. Six times zoom is going to really help us check our focus. However, we press on the dial here, it's going to go full screen up to 10 times magnification. And from here, we can easily check our key focus simply by being zoomed in and turning the focus ring until our subject is sharp. Next up is video resolution. So as you can see here, if we hit the menu button, we can go over to our recording quality and that's going to give us the different resolutions that we can film at. You are definitely going to want to shoot at 4K and I recommend shooting here at 4K 10 bit video, 120 megabits a second at 30 or 60 frames per second. Ideally, you want to shoot at the highest bit rate available and in this case, it's going to be 4K 10 bit video 
The higher the bitrate, the more raw data your camera is recording. You are going to want as much information as possible when you are color grading. I also highly recommend shooting 4K 8-bit video at 60 frames a second. 60 frames per second is going to allow you to film a 5-second clip, slow down that footage 50%, and turn that 5-second clip into 10 seconds. And when shooting cinematic video, this is going to be extremely helpful. Next up is depth of field. So this Canon lens cover is going to be our subject for this video. And as you guys can see, the Canon lens cap is in focus, but the background is very blurry. And that's because our aperture is wide open here at f1.1. Lower f numbers like 1.1 are going to give us shallow depth of fields. We are going to record a quick video and you're gonna see that on screen right now. In this video, I apparently bumped my model pod, and because I was shooting at such a shallow depth of view, it actually threw my subject out of focus, but you can get the idea here. Your subject should be in focus, and then your background's nicely blurred. Now we are going to shoot at a deep depth of field, so we're going to stop down the aperture here to f8, and that's going to make our scene darker, so then we're going to have to use a slower shutter speed to compensate. We're going to bring our shutter all the way down to 30, and now we're going to start up the recording. And what you're seeing on the screen is what we actually recorded right then. And as you guys can see, the Canon lens cap is perfectly in focus, and also the background is much more in focus than it was at f1.1, and that is what you'd call a deep depth of field. The last thing we are going to talk about today is video shutter speeds. Right now we are filming while shaking the camera around side to side. And this is what our video is going to look like. So as you guys can see, it doesn't look very smooth. And if we keep pausing like this, every single time we pause the video, it's going to be blurry. So we're going to change our shutter speed to a very fast 1 800th of a second shutter speed. And now we're going to repeat the exact same test. Here is the video that we filmed. And as you guys can see, it looks a lot less blurry. And when pausing it, our subject is much more sharp than it was when using a slow shutter speed. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up down below. As always, and of course, make sure to subscribe to this channel and then you won't miss any new videos just like this one. Again, thank you all so much for watching this video and I will catch you all in the next one.